How's it going everyone? Kim Blacktooth here. It's patch time bitch, which means it's the perfect time to play some Gwent. So in this video, we're going to look and count down the top 10 biggest balance changes or the ones that are going to have the most effect on patch 0.8.16. Now, that patch has already actually been implemented, so you can actually log into your, your GOG client, update Gwent and actually play these changes already, which, which hopefully will validate some of the top 10 choices. So, Let's start with number 10. Number 10 is that the Hawker supports now correctly die when they get lacerated or Stamilfords or things like that. Their priority has changed, so the new criteria is that they need to be on the board to get buffed and their health needs to be above zero. If their health reaches zero, then they will die before the buff takes effect. So that's, that's really useful. It is going to change how... Some of the Squirtel decks play, you may see the Hawk supports as more of a um, possibly a round two or maybe even a round three choice because they're so vulnerable. You want to kind of absorb some of your opponent's wounding before you try and place these down, I think. So the Hawkers are two strength and most other things that do the similar thing are three strength. Now, I think that one strength difference isn't going to affect much apart from possibly Stamilfor's Tremors. I think most other things do at least three strength wounding. So it's not that big of an issue, I think. Some things do one strength wounding. There's probably one, maybe two things that two, do two strength. Something like Holger Blackhand, but he's not very popular. So um, for the most part, the strength, I think, is fine. But he is a lot more vulnerable than it used to be. Number nine. Quite a nerf for Skelliger. But it's actually appeared quite low on the list. And the reason for that is we've got loads of good stuff to come. But it's the Skelligers Clan Tordorok Shieldsmiths. Their buff has been reduced by half. Their strength has also been increased by one, so they're worth six. Because their original strength buff used to do four strength, but now it only does two. So it's less impactful than it used to be, which is kind of a big deal, since it was very, very important. But there's not much an opponent could do about it, apart from scorch it on the final round, or possibly weather it down at certain points when you needed to win. So now it's been reduced, so it's less impactful. You could compare the Clan Heimei Scald guy who is 4 strength as well, but he buffs everything on the row by 2. But his buff doesn't transfer over. So there's there's pros and cons to this. You could mix in both of these guys and they could work. So we'll have to see just how good the Shieldsmiths uh, are anymore. Because obviously buffing Olgird or buffing Morkvarg or Roach is not going to be as impactful as it used to be because you're only buffing it by two per turn. So if you treble that effect, it's really just six strength that you're giving them over the three rounds. So it's, it is quite a, a bit of a nerf there, but I think a lot of people were expecting it to go to three, but it's actually two strength now. So it's, uh, it's a little hard hitting, I think, that one. Number eight. So this one is Dimerotian Bomb now affecting gold cards. So you can reset gold card strength to its original value. Now, initially... I praised this quite a lot in my discussion video, in my overview video. I, I thought it would be really, 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 really good. But it's bumped down on the list quite a bit. It's dropped down quite a lot. Because after thinking about it and discussing it and looking at what kind of things, what the actual change did, it's not as impactful as I thought it would be. Now, there are some clear cards that it counters now that it didn't before. But uh, let me just go over the counters. So it counters Yennefer because she can buff gold cards by two. And it can counter that. It counters the Northern Realms deck ability completely. Where they get plus two strength on all their gold cards. That's crazy as well. And I thought initially it would counter the Northern Realms cheese decks. Where they get a card. Buff it, buff it, buff it. To about 40 strength. And then they Adrenaline Rush, Fall Test and Promote. But it actually won't counter that. Because when you promote something. The buff strength, the green strength. Now gets set to original strength. And then you can't lure it anymore. So it doesn't actually even counter that anymore. I think the Dime Routine Bomb change was unnecessary because of the filler change that we'll get onto later. But some of the cards that it does actually counter now are in Skelliger, which is really, really weird because Skelliger is probably the faction which utilizes this the best. Okay, so it's really weird. It counters things like Madman Lugos. So he is a, I think, four strength gold card, but he gets plus two strength for every non-gold unit in your graveyard. So we can literally get up to about 22, 25 strength gold, okay? So usually there's no way to deal with him apart from maybe demote him and then scorch him or something like that. 
Philippa used to be able to deal with him, but since she got changed, you know, there was no real way to deal with him. But Diamond Routine Bomb will deal with him. It'll send him straight back down to four. But that's like countering a card in the deck that Diamond Routine Bomb really works well in, which is really strange. It'll also counter Hjalmar. He's 10 strength and he can get another 10 via killing the Lord of Undvik. And I believe that's a buff, so you can send him down by 10 after he's got that. So Diamond Routine Bomb counters a lot of Skelliger cards, which is really, really weird. And there's not many other gold card buffs floating around, you know? You could, if your cards get wounded, you can send them back up. But generally wounding, apart from Radovid, is probably going to be maximum 6. And that's only a one-time use thing most of the time. 5 or 4, and Radovid can do 10. You could reset that, so that could be decent. But, uh... For reducing buffs, it's not that powerful unless you're fighting something like Madman Lugos, which will skyrocket quite a lot. And just to reiterate, it doesn't stop the Northern Realms cheese, which is a pain. Number seven. So next we've got the Trebuchets, and they've seen a couple of nerfs as well as a buff to counteract this nerfs a little bit. So first of all, their damage has been decreased from two to one. So one damage every other turn isn't too bad. I think that's going to be slightly negligible. I think it's actually helps some decks that use Warcry or possibly the Skelliger ones that use the Axemen with the South Wounding archetype. It really helps those out a lot. And I think two strength was reasonable. It would actually hurt you quite a bit. But one strength is probably not that bad, even if you've got three on the board. So um, their efficiency has lessened quite a bit there, I'd say. They also got a strength increase from four to five, so they're worth more, but they no longer buff each other by plus one. I think that is really, really important, the buff. Um, has been removed because they could easily get to seven and you couldn't remove them after a certain period of time. You know, after you, after they placed one or two, they became six strength and seven and you couldn't get rid of them. Even if, even if you could get rid of them, they could medic them on and it, was, it buffed the other ones even more. And I think it was just, it was too much. So I'm glad they've removed getting buffed plus one every time one enters the battlefield. It makes it more reasonable that you could try and remove these cards okay and that that for me is, is is really really good but also the damage has been decreased the that they deal which i think is uh, in line as well and they've actually buffed it which is good so i think we probably won't see as many reinforced trebuchets making an appearance in northern realms deck i'm sure people are still going to give them a try and see if they can make them work but i think they're going to be a lot more less effective than they used to be number six so Priscilla has seen a reasonable change. So she now draws two cards face up and you get to choose which one you want to play. Okay, so Priscilla can still draw medics and, you know, you can get a bit of chaining going. But, you know, it, it's not as crazy. You're just drawing one card and playing it. And don't forget, it's kind of like a better version of Prince Stennis, but you play the card immediately. So there's no card advantage like there is with Prince Stennis. So she still can be decoyed, she can still be milvered possibly by the opponent, she could still be medicked out of the graveyard, so you could still see multiple plays from Priscilla, which is still decent because she still gives you a nice choice on what cards to pull out of the graveyard and you can still chain some things together, you know, Reaver Scouts are going to be a good example of that. You know, she's going to be a little less effective, you're going to have to work a little bit harder to get your units onto the board, but you know, it's still a very good card I think, having cards from your deck to the board is still very good. Okay, you could you could possibly get Neneke and then chain into a field medic and then chain into a unit. So you can still get a reasonable short chain just from playing Priscilla. And the choice is nice. Number five. So Philippa Eilhart has been tag teamed by the Nerf Bat. Okay, her strength has been increased from six to 12 and she's only disloyal now. So you have to give that 12 strength golden card to the opponent. And when she sets everything on a row to one strength, it does not include gold units anymore. It's only non-gold cards that she sets to one. So that is a really heavy nerf in two aspects there. And so she's nowhere near as good as she used to be. Now, it can still be useful for things that are, say, weather immune, possibly. Okay. But I'd like to just go back to Dime, Roti, and Bomb. That resets golden cards to their original strengths. Now... If Philippa still affected gold cards, Diamond Routine Bomb would be necessary. Okay, because that would be like probably the only way to counter it. But now she doesn't affect gold cards, I think Diamond Routine Bombs was unnecessary because Diamond Routine Bomb set in cards to original strength gold cards. 
there's not much buffing and there's not much wounding in gold card form. You know, maybe you can get 10 with Radovid, which is an extreme, but he should be allowed that because he's the leader. And you've got some heavy buffs like Hjalmar and Madman Lugos as well. They're kind of heavy gold buffs. But other than that, you know, because Philip has changed, Diamond and Bomb didn't need to be changed. But Philippa, she might get stuck in your hand a lot more often because you are giving him 12 strength. People might still be playing around Philippa a little bit by separating their combos on different rows, which I think is a decent strategy to do if you can handle the, uh, the redu reduction in strength. But yeah, she's definitely not going to be as strong now. I'd be surprised if she doesn't get taken out of a lot of decks and replaced with another really good uh, gold card, something like... Um, John Natalis, he's 16 strength, really, really worth it he is. So uh, we might see that coming into effect instead. So it's a little late addition. As you can see, I've lost my shirt. People have been trying to combine cards to really get the full effectiveness out of Philippa. And one of the combinations which has seemingly cropped up is Dijkstra add Philippa. So first you place Dijkstra down, he'll strip gold status from everything on the board that is gold. So everything turns to non-gold, and then Philippa can affect everything. So by using those two cards in tandem, you could get the full effect out of Philippa before the nerf. So I really like the idea that, you know, it can still be done, but you've just got to think about it and work a little bit harder to get Philippa's full effect, which is really nice. Number four. So this is actually a hidden buff that was not in the patch notes, but affects the Savage Bear's priority. And the Savage Bears were bronze units for Skellige, and any time a non-gold unit appeared on the battlefield, it would ping them for one damage, on the opponent's side or your side. So Savage Bears were really, really good prior to the patch to deny Priscilla. Okay, so Priscilla is one strength. If you had a Savage Bear on the board, Priscilla would come onto the board, get pinged for one strength, and would go to the graveyard before she was able to draw the units out. But that was really, really important. One of the best decks to beat Northern Realms trebuchets. And the Savage Bears were really, really good at stopping Priscilla, but they were not very good at stopping anything else. If you had three Savage Bears on the board, so they were pinged for three damage, then if they played a Field Medic, the Field Medic would still do the ability before it died. The same with Dandelion, it would still do the ability before it died, so they'd still get a free Commander's Horn. And there's just loads and loads of cards that just still did their abilities before it died to the Savage Bears, which was really kind of upsetting, actually. Priscilla was seemingly the only person that died before their ability went off. But now the priority has actually changed. Okay, so their priority, instead of being, I think it was 500, is now 100. And the way it works is the higher the priority, the more important it is, the more, um, the faster it activates, basically, in, in the order of operations. If you place a card into weather, the Savage Bears will ping him before he gets affected by the weather. So it's not uh, a massively overpowered combo of weather plus Savage Bear equals death to any non-golds. That doesn't happen. But anything else, any abilities, won't get activated until the Savage Bear has done its pings. So if you have three Savage Bears on the board, you can deny Field Medics, you can deny Neneke, you can deny Priscilla, Commander's Horn, a lot of good stuff. So Savage Bears are really high on this list because they're just going to be so good if you can get a few of them out, deny a lot of the really good cards, you know. There's so many cards they could deny because their priority is so high now, so I'm really looking forward to playing with that deck just a lot more, you know. Number three. The so number three is Clear Skies only resetting to original strength when played if the unit was wounded. So if you manage to get reduced to one in weather, then you buff past your original strength, they will keep that original strength. And I think this is going to make a huge impact, especially on cards which are resilient, which stay over particular rounds. Because normally, if you got weathered down to one, even though you'll, you'll get your original strength back at the end of the round, you, you didn't want to buff them because you're just going to lose those buffs on the next round, which was really, really hurtful. Especially if you needed loads and loads of strength on this round to win it. You could get it, but then you're really going to just completely get obliterated next round because you've wasted all your buffs because they're all going to disappear. So this is mostly probably for the Squirtel, Resilient Dwarves, Yarpin, the Mahakam Defenders, stuff like that. But it's really, really important now. And I think it will help a lot there. And it will also help a lot of other things as well. You know, so if you do happen to buff past the original strength, they will keep it if you clear skies, which is, which is really, really nice. I think that will make a huge impact 
to uh, just the way Clear Skies comes into certain decks and maybe goes out of certain decks as well. So we know the Ice Giant actually carries on the wounding. So if it gets doubled in strength to 14 when the Frost is in play, and then it gets wounded and Clear Skies comes into effect, the wounding stays on because it will go down by 7. So it will go below its original strength, which is really, really good, really fair in my opinion. So Clear Skies just seems to be coming along really nicely and becomes a lot more fair in my opinion. And that includes at the end of the round when clear, like a pseudo Clear Skies happens. It would just be fairer, which is really, really good. Number two. The number two is the monster's deck ability no longer keeping gold cards onto the board. So this is a huge nerf for monsters, but hopefully it just make it a lot more interesting, a lot more um, strategic on what cards they want to keep. Because keeping Siri, keeping Geralt, keeping Caranthia, Leshian, things like that, they were quite strong, especially Siri. You could potentially keep Siri for the entire game because she'll come back to your hand and stuff. It was uh, it was quite crazy, but now you know they're going to have to change it up a bit, and I hope we see some interesting plays. The the leader card Eredin has now changed from gold to silver, so he can stay on the board now at ten strength, and he's immune to frost, which is really really good, and also counts as a as a wild hunt character for Nithral, which is really really nice. So I'm, I'm thinking we might see a shift from you know some of those gold cards to try and keep them on the board. We might see a shift to stronger silvers and stronger bronze cards coming in. Things like the Giant Toad, which has been buffed loads. Well, hopefully that would stay on the board. That would be really, really nice. We've got the Ghoul. He could be buffed loads. That's a really good combo, Giant Toad and Ghoul. Okay, Fiends. We've got Ancient Foglets, which has been buffed a lot by Fog. Those staying on the boards is really good. You can... So, you know, there's quite a few cards here which could be kept. And don't forget... The developers are saying that, don't forget, some of the abilities are not final. Like the Drowner should have an ability. He might be a really good card to keep in the future through the monster deck ability. So it's not a complete death now for monsters. They're, they're going to have to play their silvers like most of the people. That are just going to happen on this one turn. Hopefully we'll just see some more interesting plays with the silvers and the bronze and the deck ability combined together. Number one. So my number one is something which is going to hit two factions a lot more than other factions. I think a lot of you know what it's going to be. And it's the whole medic tags along with certain medics not being able to medic out things with the medic tags. Hopefully that made sense. But all the medics in the game now have the medic tag. Okay, Just like dwarves have a tag and uh, witches have a tag, medics now have the medic tag. And... The bronze medics can no longer medic out things with medic tags. So Priestesses of Freya can no longer medic out other Priestesses of Freya. So you are going to lose a chain of Priestesses on say like round 2 and round 3. Which was very common that you'd just chain as many as you could out of the graveyard before picking your unit. That's no longer possible with the Priestesses of Freya. Okay for Skelliger. Northern Realms also falls into this issue where... A field medic can no longer medic out other medics. Okay, so the field medic can no longer medic out Neneke. It can no longer medic out other field medics. So when you play a field medic, you're going to get another unit. Okay, straight off the bat, there's no chaining involved. Okay, now there are still possibilities for both factions to chain a couple of medics. And the way they could do this is by using a silver medic. Silver medics can still pull out medics okay obviously for northern rounds you could use neneke to pull out a field medic to pull out a unit that is non-medic now the trade-off for this is that neneke can choose who it brings out and if you choose the field medic then no, then you no longer get a choice so we might see a lot of people not actually choosing to chain medics because then they lose the ability to specify the target with Neneke or Shani or whatever. So I'm thinking like this is really, really good. I think you're still going to get a lot of medics. You're going to get access to about five. You could possibly get access to a couple more with decoy and things like that. You know, you can use Shani to pull out Neneke to pull out a specific target. So you can still chain some of your gold and silver uh, medics. The same for Skellige Restoration into Sigfreya into a specific target of silver um, rank if you want. So there's still some variance, you know, and hopefully this just means that for non-medic 
factions like square tail and monsters they can get rid of the medics and know that you've hurt your opponent okay you've you've, you've hurt their strategy a little bit maybe because there's nothing worse than the opponent for Skellige having loads of uh, Priestesses of Freya out or Northern Realms having loads of Field Medics out and you really can't do anything about it because if they've got one more Medic in their hand they just bring them all straight back onto the board. That is like the worst feeling ever. Just, you know, knowing that you can't do anything about these cards. But now you can. If you put three Field Medics into the graveyard, yeah, he could pull one out with Neneke but at least then he's not pulling out something else, you know. The field medic could pull out what he wanted to pull out, but it's risky. And that's something that I think is really, really good. And that's why it's a very, very good change. It will make a huge impact on Northern Realms players and Skellige players. You're going to have to force them to use their medics more strategically, I think. Which is, which is really, really good. So thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you agree with the list or whether you'd reorder them. I know I missed out a couple of things, like I think there's a couple of changes which seem really big but are not necessarily as big. One of them would be like Draug, no longer scorching gold units. There's not many gold units which are 3 strength or less so it's not a huge deal um, and uh, I think it's fine that it, it doesn't do that. There's going to be a lot more units which are non-gold that are, you're going to scorch so that's not a huge impactful change but it's nice to see. And there's some other ones, Queensguard, Ceres, buffing by original strength, those types of things. They're, they're pretty good, but I think they're very, very specific. So, um, thanks for watching, everyone. Take care, and I'll see you again very soon.